my clay, which was so nice and firm a few minutes ago, is now squishy again, but I'm going to attempt to cut anyway. And I know this end's going to be distorted. You can see it's, I took that much off and I still don't have my center core. But it's close. It's getting there. There we go. It's in there. So, here's where we started. Here's where we ended up. The cool thing about this is, is whether it's polymer clay, glass candy, cookies, the caning technique is the same. And the whole idea behind it is no matter how, whatever picture you put inside that tube at whatever diameter, it's going to be the same no matter how small you reduce it. So this is going to be our same bullseye, whether I'm, uh, you know, have a dinner size plate cane or a tiny little one like this. All right, before our cane gets too soft, let's talk about what you can do with it. If you want, you can just cut slices, put holes in it, and have beads, just like that, and they're slices. You can, another common thing is to cut slices off and apply them to a core, and you can kind of separate them, and here I overlapped, and it gives a totally different effect. And if you're gonna do this and totally cover it, you can certainly use any scrap clay. I mean, you could roll this up because it's not good for anything except maybe marble beads or Natasha beads. You can use this as your core because nothing's gonna show. If you're not gonna overlap them, then choose your background color wisely. In this case, I've made a fairly large one, so I use Sculpey Ultralight, which is a relatively new clay. It's kind of like working with marshmallows. <laughs> um, but the, the, if this was solid clay, it would be extremely heavy. But as it is, it's, it's quite a light uh, bead. So depending on what you want to do, you can uh, cut slices and cover it. I'll just do a couple. And squish a little bit. But even if they do squish, you know, you have the power to put them back in the shape you want. You can just apply it to your core. You could even take like two giant ones, wrap the whole thing in, and have two giant bullseyes if you wanted. However you want to do it, you're the artist. So, you know, and remember when you smooth it, this will spread. So, you don't really want to overlap them. I mean, physically a whole lot, because uh, it'll distort a little bit. But even if you leave a little gap, it, it's likely that when you roll it, it will... Um, It'll, it'll fill in nicely. So, Just a couple ideas of what to do with your canes. Uh, as usual, you can turn this bead into any shape you want what, after it's covered, squares, triangles, whatever, ovals, uh, or just leave it as a, as a circle. Again, when you're putting holes in beads, kind of aim your finger, aim your needle towards your finger, and you kind of have a sense of when it's about to pop out the other end. Before it comes all the way through, pull it out, put it back in, aim in the same direction, and there you go. Bake your beads according to manufacturer's temperature. Um, these are pretty thick, so you can leave them in a, a, a good amount of time, you know, even up to an hour for something this thick. Um, when something gets really big, I notice on here we had some cracking. It's not a bad idea if you put it in, if you know your oven isn't going to spike in temperature as it heats, you can put it in a cool oven, uh, bring it up to temperature, bake it the full amount of time, turn off the oven, and uh, leave it in there to cool. And that sometimes helps in um, minimizing cracking. Uh, cracking something you'll get with, with larger beads. So, enjoy, and... Uh, Work on those new kinds of canes.